As we journey on in this Lenten season, I bet none of us had expected to give up quite this much. And unfortunately, the end is not in sight. But we carry on knowing that God is walking with us, and God will help us through this. We know this because of the countless number of times that we read about God being there for the Israelites when they needed them, when they needed him. We know this because of the times that Jesus was there for his disciples, his friends, and others in need. Today's text is appropriate for today because it reminds us that when things get rough, we need to trust in God and in God's timing. For some reason, however, this passage in John is often seen as troubling. When Lazarus, whom Jesus considers a friend, had become deathly ill, his sisters Martha and Mary sent word to Jesus. They knew that Jesus could heal Lazarus, their brother. So they made sure to get him the message that Lazarus was ill. One would think that Jesus would drop everything and go and heal Lazarus. Yet Jesus' response is troubling. Instead of heading straight to the home of Lazarus, Jesus stays right where he was for two more days. He takes his time, finishes what he's doing, before he even heads to head toward Bethany, toward the home of Lazarus. In a world where we want things without having to wait, we find this troubling. After all, we'd like to think that if a friend or a family member was suddenly needing our support, we would drop everything and be there for that person. And yet, here is Jesus, the only one who can do something about his illness, and he's in no hurry to get to his bedside. Instead, he takes his time and waits two more days before even leaving. Which, as it turns out, is just enough time to la for Lazarus to go from seriously ill to having died. In fact, the text tells us that he even took his time traveling there. So much so that by the time Jesus reaches Bethany, Lazarus has already been in the tomb for four days. Anyone who might question whether Lazarus was really dead would believe it after that, after four days. So it is that when Mary and Martha hear that Jesus is finally on his way, Mary stays home. She stays home to grieve. But Martha goes out to meet Jesus. And Martha's desperate plea when she sees him is genuine. She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. How many times have we given this plea to God? Lord, if you, had been not, if you had been here, this would not have happened. And perhaps we're even thinking of it now. Lord, if you were here, this wouldn't be happening. I don't doubt that Mary and Martha were disappointed that Jesus took too long to come. They needed Lazarus alive. It wasn't just because he was their brother and they loved him, it was also because he was their stability. In a world where only men could own property and be a voice in the community, Lazarus was not only family, but he was their stability. I sometimes wonder if Mary stayed home because she was too disappointed that Jesus hadn't come sooner. But Martha, the busy one, she can't help herself but go directly to Jesus and confront him. After all, it was Martha who confronted Jesus when she thought her sister should be helping in the kitchen instead of kneeling at his feet and listening to him teach. But even when Martha confronts Jesus, she also adds, But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Her faith. Has not wavered. Even in her disappointment of his delayed coming and missed opportunity, she still has complete faith that whatever he asks of her or of God will happen. When we hear, we then hear Jesus responding with these well-known words, I am the resurrection
resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. He then asks Martha if she believes this. She does, and she says so. She then left Jesus and brought back her sister Mary. Mary kneels before his feet and says the same thing to Jesus that Martha said. She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then she wept just as those who were with her. Moved with pity, Jesus says, well, take me to the tomb. And when they get there, he orders them to remove the stone. And then he looks at Martha and he reminds her that she would see the glory of God. He then prays. He prays to God and then looks in the tomb and calls Lazarus out of the tomb. And out comes Lazarus, alive. And with this miracle, many more believed in Jesus. So often, when we are in the middle of our crisis, we have trouble seeing how God is with us. We can't see the end result, and we only fear the worst. Yet when it's over, we can look back, or even, even in that moment, see the glory of God. We are in the midst of a global medical crisis, and we pray for God to help us in the midst of this, and we wonder why it appears that he hasn't come to our aid. But like Mary and Martha, sometimes we have to wait to see God's glory. Sometimes we have to wait and go through those hard times before we can finally see God's perfect timing. In the next few weeks and months, there will be grief, there will be heartache, and it will be difficult. But like Jesus said to Martha and Mary, we will see the glory of God in the end. So in the midst of this new reality, we need to stand firm in our faith. We need to have hope that when this is all over, God's glory will shine through. While it's easy to get caught up in the hardships of today, we need to trust in God's love and in God's timing. G. Campbell Morgan once said, Waiting for God is not laziness. Waiting for God is not going to sleep. Waiting for God is not the abandonment of faith. Waiting for God means, first, activity under command. Second, readiness for any new command that may come. And third, the ability to do nothing until the command is given. There are times when we are called to action. There are times when we are called to wait. And there are times when we are called to trust. Today, we are being called to wait and to trust. Jesus reminds us, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So we wait, and we trust. Consider the words of this poem by Bailey Gibbons called Midnight Times. In the midnight times of my life, when everything seems so wrong, just help me to remember that your name will bring a song. For when I whisper Jesus, my darkness turns to day. I see you here beside me. I can hear the words you say. You tell me that you love me, that your son died to set me free, that I'd never be alone because you are here with me. Lord, help me to remember my answer is in your hands. When all else fails, You'll be here, and your strength will help me stand. When you need encouragement and strength, remember this passage here in the Gospel of John and wait. Wait for it, because God knows the bigger picture and is with us every step of the way. Amen. Let us pray. 
Merciful God, in these uncertain times, help us to remember that we will get through this and that your glory will shine in the end. Help us to keep our focus on your amazing grace and know that you are with us during this difficult time. In Jesus' name we pray.